Okay, the first fight in the card is going to be a women's bout in the flyweight division between two American fighters, Emily Whitmire and Hannah Goldie. Now, Hannah Goldie fought back at the end of July, so it's a pretty quick turnaround for her. She lost that bout. We'll get into those details here. And she is a replacement for Corey McKenna. Corey McKenna was supposed to fight here. Emily Whitmire, she had to back out. Not sure why. Anyway, Goldie's 29 years old. She's 5 and 2 overall. Six, I'm sorry, 6 foot 4. She's 5 foot 4 in height with a 61 inch reach. According to the money line here, she's a slight dog at plus 100, but it's more or less a pick em. Now, Whitmire's 30 years old. She's She's minus 120 in the money line, 4-4 four and four overall. So she's got a 500 record, which is, eh, you know, whatever. We'll talk more about it here. She's 5'5 five five in height with a 63-inch reach. So the reach advantage here goes to Whitmire, and the height advantage goes to Whitmire, but it's not a significant reach advantage. Um, I would actually argue that based upon what I've seen of the fighters in their fights, I think the reach advantage is probably a little more than what it says here, but hey, whatever, is what it is. In terms of striking offense, Whitmire's landing just under three strikes per minute, and she's also absorbing just about three strikes per minute. For Hannah Goldie, she's dishing out 6.4 strikes of offense per minute, and she's absorbing 5.2 strikes of offense per minute. In terms of takedowns, not a lot of takedowns here by either fighter. For Emily Whitmire, she's averaging just about one takedown per three-round fight. And for Goldie, she's averaging .67 or just about half a takedown per three-round fight or per full, full normal 15-round fight. Okay. For takedown defense, Hannah Goldie is defending takedowns at a 66% rate. And Whitmire is defending 70% of the takedowns attempted against her. Now, according to the tapology, and this was like so weird to me, Goldie's favored to win by 72%. Now, the money line has Whitmire a little bit, you know, favored, um, but it's more or less a pick But Goldie's 72%. And I'll look, I'm going to try to convince you guys here. If you think Goldie's going to win, I'm going to try to convince you that Emily Whitmire is going to win this fight. There's value in that minus 120 bet. I'm going to take a full unit here on Emily Whitmire. I'm going to parlay her too because I think this is a black and white situation when you start looking at just the details of it. Okay, let's look here first at Hannah Goldie. She's coming off of a loss here in the end of, at the end of July against uh, Belbita, right? Coming into that fight against Belbita, she was favored to win that fight. She was like a minus 255 favorite to beat Belbita. And, you know, my question is going to the fight where, well, listen, Belbita's a good striker. You know, I haven't seen a lot from Hannah Goldie. You know, it's um, her first, uh, it was her second UFC fight. She had lost her first UFC fight against Miranda Granger. I saw similarities between Miranda Granger and, De and Deanna Belbita. And that's what ended up happening. Look, not only did Deanna Belbita beat her in that fight at the end of July, she pieced up Hannah Goldie. She stunned Hannah Goldie. She knocked her down at one point in that fight. Um, so it was a beatdown. And look, just to be specific, Hannah Goldie lost every round of the fight against Belbita. So every judge on every card had a 10-9 for every round. Not like one judge having one round for Hannah Goldie. No, every single one of the three judges had every single round going for Belbita. Now, why is that significant? Because look at her prior fight against Miranda Granger. Okay, when Hannah Goldie fought Miranda Granger, it went three rounds of decision. Well, guess what those, those judges' scorecards look like? Same exact thing. So now we've got two fights, six rounds that Hannah Goldie has fought in the UFC. She has not even won a single round on a single judge's scorecards. Forget about just winning a round. Just a single judge giving her a round, okay? Six total rounds. You look over at Emily Whitmire. Yes, yeah, she's 4-4. Four and four. Yes, yeah, she's got a 500 record. But she's won two UFC fights. Okay, forget about winning the round. She's won two UFC fights. Hannah Goldie hasn't even won a round yet. So... How can you put money behind a fighter who hasn't won a single round in two fights of the UFC of UFC since she's gotten to UFC? So I think those are some of the glaring things when you look at. Look, let's also talk about her boxing. Oh my God, or her lack thereof. I saw a moment in the Diana Belbita fight. I know I'm all jacked up here because I just see people betting on Goldie, and I'm just like, it's not a good idea. It's not. She's not going to win this fight, y'all. When she was fighting De Diana Belbita. She would do something that boxers do or fighters do, karate type of guys, where they start bouncing on their toes. It's like a way to reset. It's like a mental reset. You want to loosen yourself up. You know, get yourself into that flow. You don't want to be, like, all locked up and, like, you know, that's never a good style. Obviously, you waste energy by being all tense, and it's harder to react and things of that nature. You know, just the whole deal. A lot of different sports, there's different versions of doing this, basically keeping yourself loose. Look at Hannah Goldie trying to box. She tries to stay loose. She does this thing where she tries to bounce on her feet. It's so awkward. It's like trying to teach somebody how to dance and they got two left feet. She's awkward. She's trying to stay light on her toes, but she just can't do it like naturally. So it's like an awkward trying to stay loose. She did this in front of Belbita, and then Belbita would just crack her and piece her up with like a two-three punch combination. And instead of Hannah Goldie continuing to move and be like relaxed, she freeze. She'd freeze, she would just move her head back a little bit and get tagged and get tagged again and again. And she got pieced up, she got cut up, she got beat up by Granger and Belbita. They both did that to her. Emily Whitmire is not as good as Diana Belbita, okay? She's not as good as Miranda Granger. I'm not trying to make that argument. 
But Emily Whitmire is a cut from that same mold. She's a striker. She's long. She's going she's gonna to put a lot of volume in the face of Hannah Goldie, and Hannah Goldie doesn't move her head. There is no left-to-right movement. There's her hands that are like this, like some like you know robot, rock, rock'em, sock'em robot, like she's just super stiff. There's never a hip turn when she throws a punch. You know, her best weapon is her kicking. When she opened the fight there against Belbita, going back into July, she opens that fight with like three or four nice kicks because she uses her kicks almost like a jab. She has to. Her arms are so freaking short. She's never going to reach someone with a real jab consistently. So her leg kicks is a way to do that, you know, kind of reach out to that opponent, touch a little bit. She kicked Belbita almost three times in the head within the first 30 seconds of that fight. They just weren't very hard kicks, but she was tapping her. She was doing something. And then from there, it was pretty much downhill, of course. Diana just starts piecing her up. So look, Hannah Goldie is going to be right there for, for, for getting hit. Now, if you're thinking, well, Emily Whitmire, you know, look at her fights. Let's, let's look at Emily Whitmire real quick. So she's coming off of a... Two fights that she lost back-to-back. She lost to Pollyanna Viana, and she lost to Amanda Rebus. And she got submitted both times early in the fight, especially against Viana. First round, gets armbarred. But look at the film. She's winning the fight at that point. Yeah, I know. You're like, oh, two minutes in the first round. What do you mean? Well, she took down Pollyanna Viana. She was on top of her. She just, dumb, dumb move. She tries to get up. She, as she's pulling away trying to get up, she makes it so much easier for Pollyanna Viana to just put that triangle, I mean, I mean, to get her arms up around her head to pull off the arm bar. So I'm hoping Emily, you know, she is blonde, <laughs> no offense, hopefully she learns from that experience. That was, that, was, that was all her fault. She's in top position. She's on top of the girl. She's in the space. She's where she wants to be at, and she gets taken advantage of. So just terrible move there. The prior fight, though, against Amanda Rebus, can we just admit that Amanda Rebus is like a different level than what we're talking about here? Okay, like there's Amanda Rebus and girls like that and Julian Robertson, and then there's people like Emily Whitmire and, and, and Hannah Goldie and whatnot. So she loses to Amanda Rebus. Round two, Rebus backpacks her and just easily gets her hooks in there for a rear naked choke. And look, she can't hang with that level of competition. I don't think Emily's ever going to be at that level. Um, is she UFC worthy? Yeah, I think so. Look, she's got wins against Alexandra Albu, and she beat Jamie Moyle. Those are UFC wins. They count, you know? Um, in terms of the fight against Amanda Rebus and Pollyanna Viana, she didn't win any of those rounds because obviously they were short fights and she got finished. Um, but here's something else about uh, Emily Whitmire. She's got a significant experience advantage here over Hannah Goldie. Goldie's been in there with two fighters from the UFC. Back-to-back -back fights, lost every single round. I'm trying to emphasize that. Here you got someone like Emily Whitmire where she's lost via arm bar to Jillian Robinson. She's done exhibition bouts against Roxanne Mataferi. She's been in there with people like um, Amanda Rebus and Pollyanna Vienna. So look, she's got the definitely got the experience edge. She's got two UFC wins. Look, how in how can you then knowing the knowledge that we have, uh, knowing what we know here, that that why would why would you put money in Hannah Goldie? Now, okay, is it the pitchers? Is it the physique? Okay, let me tell you a story about that. Hannah Goldie's arms are so freaking short that she can't even get a body lock. I'm not kidding. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Her arms are so short, she can't get a body lock. So that beautiful physique that she's got, that rock solid, like she looks so strong, she doesn't wrestle. She doesn't wrestle. She doesn't have any wrestling as part of her game. She's averaging less than a, a takedown per, per fight. So no wrestling. She has the shortest arms you can imagine, so the grappling is just limited. She can't get a body lock. Okay, so that physique that she has, that strong looking physique, it's very limited. If anything, I think it hurts her. It actually is a detriment. Look at Emily, Emily Whitmire, much longer, a lot like what Belbita is built like. That longer, striker, smooth, clean boxer. Hannah Goldie is built like a wrestler. If you just like if you just cut her head off and like just say, what sport would this person be playing here? Like just not forget about what she looks like, whatever. Don't even talk. What should she be? Something involving, you know, maybe wrestling or something in, in compact sport, you know, muscle bound type of sport. That's what she looks like. And okay, she's gonna be a fighter. Okay, she's gonna fight. What kind of style would you use? Wrestling. Grappling. No. Hannah Goldie wants to stay on her feet from the ring of the first bell to the ring of the last bell, and she wants to box with you. She's out here thinking that she's like some kind of a boxer. So she boxes and kickboxes and, and boxes the entire fight, and she can't do that. She's not good at that. She's got no head movement. She, do, she doesn't do combinations. She doesn't throw clean punches. She leaves herself open every single time she exchanges punches. Yes, her leg kicking, I'm sorry, her leg kicks and her kicks in general, body kicks, that's probably the best thing that she does do. But that's all that she can do. She should be wrestling more. She should be grappling more. She should be getting on top of her opponents. Doesn't do it. That's how she's built, but she doesn't fight that way. So, look, I got fighter IQ issues here with Hannah Goldie. You know, you're not going towards your, your physical, natural strength. 
All right, she's getting pieced up and hurt in both fights. Granger pieced her up, like hurt her, stunned her, and um, and so did um, and so did uh, Belpita. Okay, so she's getting pieced up. She didn't hurt, and she's also getting damage on her face. She got a lot of damage on her face at the end of July. She's coming around here in a pretty quick turnaround. Um, I think she goes 0-3 here in the UFC. I do not see Hannah Goldie on the roster, let's say, like in a year from now. You know, when I first saw her fighting, when I first evaluated her fight for Belbita, and I went back and looked at that film, and it's available out there if you guys want to go on that. I picked Belbita to win that fight, and Belbita was like a plus 155 underdog there. I had issues with the way that I saw Hannah Goldie fighting Granger. She is so stiff, y'all. She is so stiff. She just can't move out there. This is not the sport for her. I, that's, I know that sounds mean, but look, she's 29 years old. Um, she doesn't come from like an athletic background where she was like a high school, let's say, I don't know, track and field or a college, whatever. I don't know. So she kind of became an athlete later in life. And I hate to say it like this, but it, it's like you could tell. You could see that. Like watch when Emily Whitmire is out there striking with Hannah Goldie and Emily's throwing things and spinning stuff and it's coming out fluid. And then with Hannah Goldie, it's like someone's got an Xbox controller and they're pushing like X. Boom. B. Boom. And it's like that's just all she that's all she's got. And that's what she does. That's how she tries to beat people. She wants to box. She wants to fight. She did that thing in her last fight that uh Macy Barber did. That thing of like boxing the air and punching not two, three feet away from the person, getting reach him. Her arms are shorter as it as it is. And she's out here just doing this in the air. So look. This is not personal. I follow Hannah Goldie on social media. She seems like a great young lady. Uh, Emily Whitmire as well. This is not personal. I think Emily Whitmire is a UFC level fighter at this very point in her career. Not sure where her ceiling is. I think it's pretty much around where she's at. For Hannah Goldie, these are issues we're not going to fix. You know, you're not going to turn this into something different. She's 29 years old, about to be 30 years old. This is what you're going to get here. I think she's out of the UFC before you know it. I think she's on PFL or Bellator or somewhere else. She's got a cute face. You know, she's got a nice personality. Um, she's very much into this. She's a, she's a consummate athlete. But look, bottom line is uh, Emily Whitmire wins this fight. And I think when the fight is over with and people are done, whether they have tickets or not, the ones who didn't bet in this fight who were like, oh, man, you know, it's just like it's it's so low level. It's, it's women's MMA. Like, just take a closer look at it. <laughs> This girl hasn't won a freaking round yet in, in, in a UFC level fight, whereas the other girl has won multiple fights in the UFC, has striking, and is similar to the people that just beat Hannah Goldie, who's just coming off of a loss. It's not like Hannah Goldie just spent six months in Thailand improving her shit and like coming up with a whole new system here. She just came off of a loss. She probably just recovered in terms of how her face was, and I guarantee you that Emily Whitmire is going to have her face red again here between round one and three. She walks out of here, and here's my question now to you guys is, not only is, is, is Emily Whitmire going to win the fight, does Hannah Goldie just get her first round? Can she get a judge to give her a round? So not win a round on all the judges' scorecards, but can she just get one judge to give her one round? That's her challenge here for this fight. So that's our breakdown. Let's move on.